Jeremiah chapter number 20, and I'll read from verse number 7. Because I need a little bit of speed. O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. A man got to a point where he began to accuse God of deceiving him. There is a level in God where deception becomes very, very, very clear that God has deceived me. O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. For you are stronger than I am. In other words, he's saying, if it was possible that I was stronger than you, I would have canceled out your deception. Ah, ah, thou art stronger than I, and has prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. <laughs> uh, can I talk to somebody here? Imagine a prophet is going to a location where he says, God, you have deceived me. I looked at all possibilities of me surviving, but I've realized something. There is a deception in you. Let's hear what Jeremiah had a problem with. And it is because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me in a derision daily. That means whatever you are sending me to say is in contradiction to the expectations of the population. So I'm an enemy. I'm mocked. I'm vilified. People talk against me. People look at me and say, why is this man still alive? That's why the Bible says Jesus, a man who suffered the contradiction of sinners against himself. This might be too much for you when it comes to theology. But it simply means even sinners called him a sinner. Mm, you know, when a liar begins, begins to tell the truth, that's a contradiction. So here the Bible is saying... I'm a prophet and I looked at it. I've taken your word and I'm giving to your people. And people mock me. Ah, for since I spoke, I cried out violence. And I cried destruction. Spoil. Because the word was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. What did I say? Verse number 9. Then I said, I will not mention your name again. Because you are deceiving me. Ah. Nor speak any more in your name. But your weight was in my heart. A burning fire shut up in my bones. Ah! Am I talking to somebody? Say the fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary of forbearing. I could not stay. Oh, let me get into the message Bible before I preach. Can I preach it like I'm feeling it? I'm doing the best I can. You pushed me into this God. And I let you do it. You were too much for me. Hi. And now I'm a public joke. They all poke fun of me. Is it possible that you are experiencing that in your family? I told you before, your family will accuse you. Make fun of you. Jokes. Yet you will be on your way to delivering them. From a financial bondage. You are cancelling out their generational case. But they are busy fighting you. And every time you hear your brother has been married. You know it was your prayer yesterday. But they won't notice it. And they all poke fun at me. Every time I open my mouth I'm shouting murder. And rap. Hush. And all I get for my God warnings are insults and contempt. But if I say forget it, no more God messages from me. The words are a fire in my belly, a burning in my bones. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. Ah! May I bring it to this world, this Zimbabwean world, and this African context. A luminary in education from Zimbabwe who went to study in Britain and burned half of the library because all the books were in there. He had read them called Nambuzo Marechera. He said, when I speak English, I get the same relief a cow gets when it gets milked. <sighs> then he says, do you, you wonder how fluent I am in English? I took to English like a duck takes to water. No effort. Uh -huh. 
Zaendways. This is all done. Just imagine a man saying, I took to English like a duck takes to water. There was no thinking when I was speaking English. It was so fluent. And sometimes the vocabulary is loaded into me so much that I don't know what to do. The words are trying to get out. So when they get out, I get the same feeling. A cow gets when it gets milked. Let me speak like the Nigerian professor. An honorable in parliament. He says, I do not want to demystify, to mystify my audience in a state of ogamoga. I don't know what that means, but you also don't know what that means. But I guess for him, reading that English meant there was something in him that would demand that those words come out. Now the prophet is saying when the word came to him, he was just releasing them as they came. He was releasing them. Did not have filters on the word to the point that when God came in, God was demanding that you just speak the words. I don't care where you are getting them. Speak the words. So there was in him a fire shut up in his bones. I don't know how many of you have ever gotten to a point where you know I'm just here. And I got to do what needs to be done. I speak to someone here. By the end of this service, what needs to be done will be done. It doesn't matter who is preventing you from doing it. Who is preventing you from saying it. As long as the Lord has said it, I will release it. Some of you do not understand. He said something here. He says, the word of God was unto me. A fire shut up in my bones in the King James. He said, it is a fire what? Shut up in my bones. Ah, in generation Z, it is like a bullet shut up in my gun. The bullet is already in the chamber. You don't play with a gun like that. So notice what he is saying. He's saying as long as fire is inside you, you are able to perform best on fire. I'm not talking about fire on the altar here. I'm talking about their batteries. Say. You can see down. Their batteries, ma'am. Gel batteries. And then there are acid batteries. Then there are lithium batteries. The power of lithium is to contain power longer. The Bible in the book of Galatians 5, it talks of long-suffering. That word long-suffering is the word makrothmea. It doesn't mean to suffer long. No, it means to hold in fire for too long. If I had not kept the fire, sir, bah, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, makrothmea, gentleness, goodness, faith. How many fruits of the Spirit do we have? One. I had nine there. One. The fruit of the Spirit, not fruits, is love. And the definition of love is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. We are still moving. Meekness, temperance. Again, as such, there is no law. Again, is what? Again, is love. So people say there are eight. There are nine. Nonsense. One love. But notice here what the Bible is saying in verse 22. But the fruit, not fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Inside love, there is joy, there is peace, there is macrothumia. If you love God, you hold in for longer. It doesn't matter what they do to you. I'm still in here. It doesn't matter what they try to do to kill me. I'm still in here. As a matter of fact, I'm unkillable based on fire. Ma'am, what you lack is fire. A.W. Tozer had so much power and so much fire from the word to the point that A.W. Tozer was supposed to minister. For example, he was supposed to minister at 10 a.m. And he did not come to the stage. They said, where is he? He said, he's in the room. What is he doing? They went in the room and the man is still kneeling down. Until two, they cho chose another preacher to cover for him. He had come to preach. 
Imagine you call a visiting preacher and he's in your office praying. The time for service comes and goes. And you delay everyone. You say, wait, let him just say something. He went to the stage. He said, I'm very sorry. I'm late. I had other appointments. Other appointments were loading fire in my bones. The great Alexander Dawe got into a building. When he got into a building, he felt fire in his bones. He said, I don't know why I feel fire. He said, fire, Lord, why is it I'm feeling fire? He said, because that fire came from the weight. It's inside you. But notice, rise from that chair. Run. Get out of this building. He ran. When the moment he got out, the whole building blew up in pieces. There was a bomb. And when they looked at the source, where exactly the bomb was sitting, it was under his chair. There was something in him that told him, run. What fire do you have? Do you know what I've gone through? The ones you see on the internet, it's a lie. I'm not going through anything. <laughs> I remember he was sitting with the head of state and he spoke about how some people gave you pressure. He looked at him and said, me. Me, Idim Nangawa, getting pressure. From where? These are people that conquered nations that went there and fought the battles for this country. Fighting a nation. That you look at a man and say, who do you think will give me pressure? Me. You look at the person and you say, there is no pressure here. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you know how this ministry started? I'm not going to get you into, that, that time will come where I'll get you deep into another location where you understand. So let me talk to you, my people. Yeah. Hear me? This fire we are talking about is not the fire on the altar that comes in. That one is for power to use. There is a power to stay. No matter what they do to you, you are still here. Ah. Did I tell you that there is nobody in this church who can be divorced? It will be you wanting to be divorced. I tell you this. I told you what to say. If they say, I don't love you anymore, you say, no, don't worry. I have enough love for both of us. We'll use mine. Ah. I'm staying here. If you don't have love, no, I will, I will lend you mine. The problem with you, daughters of mine, is you are more agreeable. A man says, I don't love you anymore. Go to your house. You're like, please, but I love you. You start crying. No, you say, no, 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 no. Divorce yourself. I'm still here. Then look him direct in the face and say, what do you want for dinner? If he doesn't respond, he say, okay, that silence means chicken. Ah, it doesn't mean anything. Refuse to be divorced. Refuse. Carry the fire to stay. I said, carry the fire to stay. Ah. If you snarl and you look at me and say, maybe you mean beef. I'll cook both. You make the choice. And cook a mean chicken, a mean one. We went to Masingo just a few days ago, and my brother took me to a location. I never go out here. Eh? And this man took me to a location. And we sat there. And we ate chicken. When I finished, I said, this is the best chicken in the Sadiq region. <laughs> I don't know how the, the competitions were done in my head. And I was sitting with the prosecutor general, the, the prosecutor, uh, the, the public prosecutor. And he took me to it like this. He said, this one is what you are supposed to be given when you are about to die. Cook a mean chicken. Put it there. I assure you one thing. Your husband will get angry. Don't stay in the room, leave. Because you won't eat it. The problem is you lack fire. I'm talking about small things like marriage, but you lack fire. You have nothing. You're too weak. 
So the fire will never come to you until you realize there is something that the Bible says. It says, for your word was unto me like a fire shut up in my bones. So what is fire? The word. The entrance of thy word giveth. That light is the word, stadium lights for Tiso. They burn. When you see me here, and we have all the things we have now, creature comforts, they call them, in the Western world. And because we can buy now any Mercedes Benz we can get to, there is enough money to just go to any inventory in this country of any car garage and buy all of them. And leave and tell them, start again. But when we started, I used to look at a master. Some rubbish master. Not the one you have. Some rubbish one. I pray to God, God, if you love me. Who knew? I would be sitting there with three Lamborghinis. But what made me stay there? What made me stay? Fire was burning in my bones. There was a word in my spirit. A word for more. I know you are not hearing what I'm saying. Bishop Oyedepo. Bishop Oyedepo, when he started, nothing. He had to move out of the town because there was, he had to go to another location. When he got there, out of the town, I don't know how many kilometers, I'm talking about tens of kilometers, out of Lagos, going that direction, to a swampy area, and he started. Now, the building is building is over 400 million US dollars. And there was no fundraising in the church. A man came and said, I have 10 million, sir. Here's my 10 million. Please, I want to sow towards the building. He said, no, I don't need your 10 million. The money is already paid for. The building is paid for. You can't add anything now. Huh? 10 million. I know. I know what you're thinking now. Why tell the guy we don't need it? Just take it. No. He said, as for this building, you can't add anything. No millions will do anything to this building. We've already paid. We are already fully done. Huh? But the builders are still building. We have more than enough. There it is. It did not start there. Say. It didn't start there. When you see Uber Angel here, you think we arrived just yesterday and we're here now. No. This is why we have many sons and daughters who are failing ministry because they saw us at this level and thought we started at this level. Yet there was a fire that kept us burning. Ah. My father was rich. According to his level of rich in his area. I don't have a story where we were broke and I was having problems paying school fees. I don't have that problem. So some prophets can have that system and, 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 and have that story. I don't. My parents were not broke. But notice here. I got to a point when I was detached by age from my parents that I was now on my own. Now in that moment, it is just the two of you. Me and my wife. Do you know, did I even tell you that there was a time where I wasn't working and it was my wife working? For a whole year. I was getting fed by my wife. So if you think you can sashay into my office and become the first lady of spirit and stop. Tofia <laughs> kwa. Over my dead body. If BB Angel dies today, we will go past the grave and say, First lady. No spiritual mother to replace her. Never. Ah. But because you don't know it. You think you can just jump tricks and boom, you are there. No. There was a fire we kept. As my wife would say, if God said we are starting a ministry, let's start. You concentrate on the ministry. I work. Everything we eat here, the rent will be coming from me. One year.
You just arrived. Say, I'm here. If you look at the girl next to you and she's not smiling. Mm -hmm. One time, one time she came, she, when she arrived in Britain, she arrived in a place called Ipswich and I had to get her to Manchester uh, at the residence of Evangelist Lee, my brother, and got her to Manchester where I was staying. When we got there, I remember we got a job somewhere. We were working there. And I would go early in the morning. Are you getting this? I, I, I'll get it. Be, she would go to work early in the morning. Early where? In the morning. Until six finishes work. And I'll start to work at eight. In the evening. We only met on Sunday. You see now, when we come out here and you move there, just a few years back, I went to Lanzaria Airport, bought two jets. Two. No, no, no. Let me say something. I bought one. One. You understand? One. Millions. One. On my way out, the guy who was marketing the thing he said, sir, sir, wait. Uh, since you bought that one, the same guy is also selling this one. On my way out. You can just buy, I'll give you a discount. I said, no problem. Edit. <laughs> Who is there to tell you that at that time I was praying for a master? I saw a master on my way to a place called Longside. I saw a master. Parked, no, I'm talking about a very ugly one. My sister here, she said, she, I said, my sister, your, your father has just bought me nonsense. I said, your father has just bought me nonsense. And, and when, when I said, your father has just bought me nonsense, it's now your duty to buy me good shoes. She said, I don't have buying power. I looked at her, I said, my sister, let me tell you something. You are saying buying power. My buying power would be bigger than yours one day if you don't buy me these shoes. She bought the shoes, all right? She bought, there was a threat came. But notice here, at that time, at that time, you are sitting here. You think we just came here like this. No. The people who see us buying whatever we buy, doing whatever we are doing now, they think, oh my God, you know what? You know what? They think, ah, it just started like that. No, there is fire that keeps us going. The same Levi who is singing songs now before you. That same Levi, born with what kidney? One kidney. How do you survive? You are the P person, praying for people, sick people, the lame, HIV is going, everything is done. And, and then you hear your own son is one kidney. How do you survive that moment? One of my sons here, uh, a few days back, was it... Uh, Yesterday or two days ago? It's two days know. ago, sir. Two days ago. Yes, yes. Him. Two days ago. They called me. He, the wife called him. And he's guarding. He was in the air force, so he's now in my protocol. So he's standing like this by the door like this. And a phone rang. And Brian came and said, uh, I, was, I was having a meeting in there. And I said, uh, Ray's um, child is dead. Very true, sir. She was dead, I sir. said, what do you mean, dead? I said, dead. Not breathing. Done. I just stood up like that. Grabbed the anointing oil there. Grabbed it. Got outside. Got on the phone. I said, life! Yes, sir. You did, sir. No two minutes of thinking it. And my wife, dead. My wife told me the moment you declared, the baby started moving. And I said, for the sake of what we do, take them to the hospital now after I've prayed. It's very true, sir. In that moment, if you did not have fire, the baby would have died on the moment. On that time, dead, gone again, and gone. Never 
retained. There is a there is a government official who was there in the in the office, and the government official said, Oh my god, someone is dead. Oh my god, he's so oh my god. I said, It's not yet bad. It's not yet bad. She said, Why? Because I said, I have not prayed. It's not yet bad. As I was moving, I said, It's not yet bad. She said, she kept on repeating, she couldn't understand why I was saying, it's not yet bad. Listen to me. In that moment, when your fire is not there, it's a funeral you're having. That moment, 